approximation for the t of x. All right, so let's go back back to this. Um, so first, let, let, so we're going to be able to approximate t of x using that piecewise polynomial. Um, and we have yet to discuss how we're going to choose the weighting functions or test functions. Um, but uh, we'll do that in a second. But there's a bigger issue that comes up right away, which is that, um, well, I said that I need to be able to, like, you know, I'm looking to check whether this thing times these test functions when I integrate them is equal to zero. That implies that I should be able to actually calculate this thing, right? So, um, so we have two derivatives here. I have a dt dx and then I have a d dx over here. That implies that I need to be able to take two derivatives of the um, whatever approximation I have of t of x, right? But I'm only using piecewise linear polynomials, so this seems like a problem. Um, so don't we need to differentiate twice? And the answer is no, and this is like part of the genius of the method, is that you can use integration by parts here. So, um, so I imagine that this is, let's say, u dv, and then I do integration by parts. So that's u <laughs> uh, times v evaluated at the boundaries minus v du. Um, so you can take this part and call this the u, and then you have to basically calculate what um, I guess du is here. And um, what you find after you do that integration by parts is that um, this d dx that's sitting here kind of goes away and you end up evaluating it at the boundaries. Um, and so if I look at this, this actually only requires me to be able to take um, a first derivative in order to evaluate it at the boundaries. And then if I look at what happened here, um, so the d dx here went away, but then if this was part of the uh, d, let's call it the dv, so it's u dv, um, then um, when I calculate what, um, I guess, or sorry, um, this would be the v, I guess, part of the v part, you um, end up having to differentiate that. So now the test functions have to be first, you have to be able to take a first derivative of the test functions instead in here. As long as I can evaluate that, then um, I'm able to actually test whether this equation, which is exactly equivalent to this one because it's just integration by parts, is equal to zero. So actually, because I'm able to do integration by parts on this, I don't actually need to be able to take uh, two derivatives of our test of either the the uh, our temperature approximation or the test function. I just have to be able to take first order derivatives, and so that's really what allows us to use a linear approximation to something that actually in real life has curvature. Um, so um, that's that's part of the trick. It's a pretty cool trick.